Hi there, and welcome to another episode of World Beyond Belief. My name is Paul Marco, and today we're celebrating Brexit, and we have the honor of having our uh, our close friend Richard from the UK to report on what he's thinking about, what's going on over there, and uh, what's really happening in the UK. Uh, we're over here dancing around the breakfast table. And uh, what's going on over there, Richard? Hey, Dr. Paul. It's good to be back. <laughs> good. It's good to, good to see you. Well, we're pretty happy over here. I'm just enjoying a uh, freezing cold premium lager before the prices go up. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> the pan seems to have taken a little bit of a bashing today, so everything coming in is going to be a bit more expensive, but we know it's all going to be all right. It's just a few hiccups of the system, because uh, I don't think anyone was expecting this, were they? No, I don't think. I certainly wasn't. I was I was uh, blown over and totally elated. Uh, I, I don't think this could be the turning point. I don't think it is, but it's certainly a step in the right direction. Yeah, I think you're totally right there. This is a, it's a good step along the way, um, because I mean, it, it was it was looking so bad before. I yes. mean, look look at the situation we're in. This was Britain's special status in Europe. I mean, right? It, that that sort of says it all, really. And it really does. We, we, yeah, we we had we had people in Europe saying, no, no, we've given Britain everything they're going to get they've had right. everything there is no more to get right. and i think that explained it about as well as it was going to be explained for us you know we thought okay fine that's that's all we're going to get so uh what are we going to give them back so we gave them back this <laughs> it's totally surreal this morning yeah because uh, this this came through at about seven o'clock in the morning um, we, we had the numbers that had come in from um, all, all sides of the UK. Um, we had um, Scotland and Ireland um, voting to stay in Europe, which, which is going to make things a bit interesting later because this has sparked uh, Scotland to look again at doing another referendum for Scotland becoming independent. Right. Uh, I don't know if that'll happen because not much has really changed since the last time, you know, but... I mean, apart from the EU thing, <laughs> how could I miss that? Yeah. Um, but they're, they're sort of they're interested in staying in the EU. Um, now, people in England, on the other hand, um, as you can see, the blue areas are the people who um, voted out and the, um, the yellowy sort of areas are the people who, who voted to stay in. And there was a lot of London, actually, that voted to stay in, uh, which was a bit of a surprise, because the day before, I actually drove all around London. I did a long trip. It was, you know, a couple of hundred miles. I was all over the place uh, that day. And every, um, every bridge or um, every so often, there was like a sign saying, vote, leave. And there were cool. no signs saying, stay, none. Didn't see one. And all the people I spoke to, I, I asked the same question. I said, have you seen a sign that actually says stay? And, and nobody had. They haven't seen any that say stay at all. And this is really weird because we've got the whole establishment, all of them pretty much, coming together at the same time, saying the same thing, which is stay. Don't be leaving. You're not leaving. You are going to stay. And uh, we've we've had a bit of uh, Rothschild foot stamping going on. Um, we've we've had a few of them out. Um, this is Jacob Rothschild. So you probably <laughs> well, the people listening to World Beyond Belief have probably heard of this guy yeah. um, because he he does look like uh, the. Uh, Mr. Burns of the Simpsons. He does. <laughs> I got that. Look, isn't isn't he really? He yeah. is, isn't he? <laughs> he's supposedly he's the Pindar. He's the head of the pyramid. He's the eye. Uh, don't forget um, Evelyn. Oh, That's Evelyn, her. Evelyn, yeah. Yeah, Evelyn got him is as well. The Pindar, you see. Yeah. So uh, we've we've got we've got all all kinds of uh, all kinds of lovely people from the capstone stamping their feet because they're they're on our turf. They're locals here. Yeah. So we, we, we do get quite a bit of a shaking of the ground, you know, when they said, um, you're not leaving Europe. And they, yeah. they weren't kidding. They were, they were, you're not leaving Europe. We do not believe you are going to leave at all. Um, 
Um, we uh, pretty much got told um, that uh, everyone from the establishment was supporting stay. We had of course. all of the yeah, all, all of the major political parties stay. Newspapers stay. TV stations stay. And the occasional blip from people who said leave, which were Nigel Farage, who was a guy who couldn't even right. get himself elected. And then we had Boris Johnson, who was the mayor of London, who isn't anymore. So he stepped down from being mayor of London because uh, we can kind of see him sneaking into the political arena here because he's looking good at the moment. We've got people voting in shops. We've got people voting in bus stations. Uh, there's people voting in churches. Uh, we've got people voting in floods because we actually had uh, a month's worth of rain came down on voting day uh, in a few hours. So it, it got it got pretty serious. Uh, we've got, you can have your hair cut and vote at the same time. There's a beauty parlor that's become a voting booth or polling station. Uh, we had somebody's garage being used as a polling station. So this is actually their own garage in their house you can you can go visit them and you can vote and of course being england of course you've got to have a pub yep <laughs> so you can go in there and enjoy your premium cold beer it, it is a myth about the warm beer everybody it's it's cold here we hate warm beer <laughs> and uh, there you go look you can you can get in the pub you can vote you can have a beer while you do it that's all very all very civilized in fact probably too much civilization there you can come into somebody's front room and votes. Now, we all thought this was pretty chilled out, you know, okay, great, what could possibly go wrong? Um, and uh, we found out that people were being told they had to use pencils only to vote with, which it does make you wonder, doesn't it? You know, you're sort right. of sitting there thinking, all right, okay, I can, I can do that. But, you know, is there any chance of any fraud? There's a lady who was actually at the voting booths and um, of course, they're using pencils. And I was just saying pencils mm, could be a little bit dodgy. We're not sure about that. So, of course, she comes up with some pens. So all the people who are on the Brexit side of things, they're coming round to the voting booths, giving people pens, going, don't use the pencils. They can rub it out and change the vote. All I've done is said, there aren't only pencils in there. If you haven't got a pen, would you like to borrow mine? Okay. Not where to put the glass, nothing. Yes, I can certainly confirm know, that. And thank you very, very much. And okay. I still don't know how these ladies voted. Right? That's not none of your business anyway. No, exactly. But I was asked vote. to come here and hold dogs today and offer people the use of a pen because there are only pencils in the polling station. So the Brexit people are really on this, you know, and this happens at um, polling booths all over the place where they're now giving out pens saying to people, don't use a pencil. And it goes into uh, trending Twitter uh, hashtag, uh, don't use, uh, what's it, don't use, uh, no, use pens, that was it, Twitter's hashtag, use pens. Um, and there was quite a lot of people who were, um, who were posting under that one. And of course, like I was saying, watch this lady, she's counting the vote and she's rubbing out that pencil vote and she's putting in a vote for stay in Europe, just like everybody wants. Yeah, And they said there wasn't going to be any fraud. Well, the Brexit people have been all over this because, I mean, all through this, it's been, it's been flagrant, the campaign, absolutely ridiculous amounts of people all putting in and saying at the same time, just stay in, stay in. And look at this. This is a postal vote. Now, look where the pen is. Yeah. It's offering people... The chance to vote and stay in Europe, but wait a minute, where's the pen? Please read the instructions, then complete your ballot paper. Remember to vote, remain. <laughs> pen is right over it. Right. And you I just go, oh, come on. I mean, it, it, couldn't, it couldn't get any weirder, could it? So let's, let's take a look. Um, how about voting booth? Come on. <laughs> Look at the pencil. Remain. Yeah. <laughs> it's on the pencil. <laughs> I mean, come on. That's just, that's not right, is it? Well, they have all the power and all the money in the world. But you guys were doing stuff like in the pubs, uh, putting your advertisement on the coasters. That's clever. 
Yeah, That's... yeah, we've got, we've got the Brexiteers, they're using beer mats, they're using signs all over the place. I mean, they don't have a lot of money, you know, to do this. We had the Brexit right. movie. Brexit movie got a million and a half hits, I think, uh, at the time when all this went hot. Um, it was it was a, a really bad losing campaign, we thought. I mean, I, I didn't believe it was going to happen. I honestly didn't believe it was going to happen. I, I thought it was going to be one of those things we all hoped to happen, but the morning after, we were going to wake up and go, oh, we're still in, we're still in. Um, and I was really surprised. It was so surreal. Like uh, in the morning, I was looking at it. My mouth just dropped open. I was staring at the figures just going, no, no way. Yeah, we no did, way. We've we did the same thing. We did yeah. the same thing. Damn, I tell you, the Brexiteers, right? They, they kept their eyes on those ballot boxes. They followed them through. They were, I mean, it was like extra security. They were providing pens for people. They were trying to just shut them off at every opportunity. There was no way they were going to get right. in. They were going to change the vote. They tried to keep it as good as possible. No voting machines, all paper voting. So the only issue was pencils. But as we've just seen, you know, they were, they were changing the odd vote. But you can't change a million votes, not when people are watching right, you. Right, right. Right. Can, can do a few and they thought it was going to be close but they couldn't do enough so we still took it in the end so i'm, I'm gonna have a sip of my ice cold beer because I'm, I'm enjoying this this is great that's right well the, the bit, real big money will be made on the stock market and the money exchanges now as they drop the currency and they drop the markets and uh it'll take a while to to recover from that but you guys have to just hang in there hang tough Look at the figures. Yeah, I know it's tragic, but that was that was the pound first thing. And do you know what was even worse? Um, you know George Soros, uh, who famously shorted the pound in right. the nineties. Right. Uh, it, the pound took about a fifteen percent hit when George Soros made it, made a fortune out of it. Um, he said this time in a kind of not so veiled threat. He said twenty percent this time. And. We're looking at we're looking at a bit of a dive there. I mean, the stock market took um, oh, what did we take now? It was um, I think it was a five hundred point hit, instant five hundred point hit as soon as it opened. Skipping through that, um, someone's got to press the button on Article Fifty. Um, Article Fifty is uh, let's just do point one of Article Fifty. Any member state may decide to withdraw from the union in accordance with its own constitutional requirements. And they're talking October. So that'll be new prime minister's going to do Article 50. So they're going to enact the first point of it and pretty much negotiate how we back down from the European Union. Um, who is, they've done, who's, sorry, go on. Who's, a, who's a likely candidate for the October prime minister? I, the only one I know over there is Jeremy Corbyn. And since he decided to go for uh, stay in, I don't know. Do you, is there a prominent person who looks like they're going to... Is it Nigel Farage? I mean, what do you think? Well, Nigel Farage isn't in the right political party. He's in uh, the like, UK. UK Independence yeah. Party. So, And he didn't even get elected. Uh, there was a bit of a storm about that, actually, because the ballot boxes disappeared in his constituency. Oh, they no. didn't want him around this time. So he went off to Europe, and he's been giving Mr. Junga some, some serious jip. So if you've seen any yeah. Nigel Farage videos, he, he, he is giving it to the Europeans big time. Um, um, but we he's, watched he's, one this morning. We watched. Uh, I wanted to find out how he'd respond to it. So we watched Nigel's thing. I posted it already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he's bitch slapping him in Europe. He <laughs> is, he is. It's lovely. It's lovely. <laughs> yeah, it's a, lo lots of good times happening there. But he can't be prime minister, so he's out of it. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn, um, no, he can't. He can't do it either because uh, he's Labour. They're not in at the moment, um, which leaves the Conservatives now. Boris uh, Johnson, who was the Mayor of London, um, he stepped down as Mayor of London, which gave us our Muslim Mayor of London, which you might have heard about. Yeah, and. Yeah, and Boris is making a power play because he's moved into the political arena, so he's become a member of parliament. Uh, as he was standing up and doing the vote leave side of the campaign, which is now won, he's the centre of attention. The prime minister's gone. He's the man of the moment, except in London where they hate him. Uh, some, some great words. Like, <laughs> let's say uh, on Sky News, the C word was coming up a couple of times. We're talking about we're talking about Porky. They're going, you you scum, you scum. They were really, <laughs> really going for him. You know? Well, I mean, you're talking about Porky, right? 
No, not him. Boris Johnson. Boris so Johnson. Is, okay, so yeah, Porky's gone. He's out of there. So yeah. uh, this is David Cameron, who was who was caught with his penis in a pig. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, lovely ex prime minister now. Yeah. yeah. Good times. I I think probably the, the one to do to kind of finish this story off is um, the other people in Europe because uh, there's some creepy words being said in Europe at the moment. Um, the Dutch Freedom Party leader says, hooray for the British. Now it's our turn. Time for a Dutch referendum. I've heard that. Yeah. Dexit and, uh, or Duxit or... Meantime, uh, Czech Prime Minister, uh, Britain's decision is serious and irreversible. Now, he carries on and says, the EU has to change, not because Britain left, but because the European project needs much stronger support from citizens. Yeah. Yeah, I think most of the citizens are, are pretty much giving the European project the finger at the moment. So well, <laughs> there's not a lot of support there. Well, they've and, taken and, away representative governments. I mean, the fact yeah. that the EU calls their body the parliament, that's a joke. I mean, yeah. there's, there's nobody elected in there. It's a bunch of bureaucrats that just, they, they do what they're told to do by the, the Pindar, probably, or whoever's, whoever's behind the curtain. You'll love this. The president of Poland said, one must do everything to prevent other countries from leaving. That's ominous, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. That's well, the president of Poland. Don't let him leave. That's right. Nope. Don't want to do that. They're giving us the money. We like the money. Love That's it. right. Don't let anybody else leave. <laughs> yeah, don't let anybody else go. We don't like, okay, we've lost one, but we've got 27 left. We like them. We're going to keep them. Mm. Um, as far as we've got, so many people have done so much and pulled together to get this far. Yes. It's a, it's a great achievement at any time. It's an amazing achievement. Against oh. such ridiculously stacked odds, I didn't think it was going to happen, and I'm so no, glad it happened. Well, if, if you can do this, you can do anything. Yeah. I mean, people have said that um, the Brexit vote was more of an indicator. There's no legal mechanism to it, which means that the Article 50, um, which is the exit from the EU, the actual paperwork that needs to be enacted, um, until that actually happens, nothing changes. So you need a guy sitting in government to actually do the paperwork and agree a deal and get a deal that involves the people still winning because we can still lose. And somebody needs to keep an eye on where the paperwork goes underneath the desk and then some strange things appear on it that don't benefit anybody and it sneaks back in because that was kind of how Europe got us in the first place. We voted for a nice free trade market and what we got was a bureaucracy that was making up our laws for us and it became like an over bloated federal government that america have got right. and you know if you gave americans the same chance that we've got and said how would you like to vote your way out of the federal government and get the power back to the people how many of them would object to that i think they'd vote for it don't you oh i think that's a great idea actually <laughs> <laughs> cessation of these states right. uh, I mean there was one prediction which actually said that the United States would end up with presidents uh, of the United States yeah. so when Obama's gone um, we end up with um, a United States which has uh, no federal government each state will be managed by its own leader you know what are you going to call him maybe you call him a president of the state or i don't know they'll think of something i'm sure but that will make america a lot safer because at the moment the federal government's running away with it I mean, oh it's crazy what? it's it's an insane bunch of psychopaths running that country and you know unfortunately what they've done is they've totally distracted the americans with a crazy election and uh, so do you have anything else you want to say before we end this uh, world beyond belief I think we remember this is a great day for Britain and let's just hope other people can have a great day in the near future. How's that sound? That's great. That's wonderful. I'm on board with that. Thank you very much, Richard. Uh, thank you for getting in touch with me and, and allowing us to do this with you. Uh, have a good day. Thanks, Dr. Paul.